Okay, boys and girls, so we are back here in the exciting world of writing. We know that on Monday, we really looked closely at the prompt. We talked about the three T's. We even went ahead and started working on our matrix. And on Tuesday, we met and we read through source one and we annotated that text. We even added those ideas to our matrix. So now today, we're going to go through and read source two. We're going to talk about the text, annotate it, have a real good understanding of what we've read, and then we're going to add those ideas and details to our matrix for source two. So let's get started. We already went through and numbered the paragraphs. Again, just a reminder, normally that will be done for you. In this case, it was not. So we had to go through. Hopefully, I've numbered those correctly. But you will not normally need to do that. So now we're starting here at paragraph 8. So you should have this text. If you don't have it in front of you, pause this video. Make sure you print that and you have it available. Because you should be marking the text and annotating right along with me. Not many people can resist a trampoline when they see one. Even adults can't help but give a bounce or two. Trampolines can be a great way to have fun while you exercise, but trampolines can be dangerous too. Well, I know that I'm trying to find evidence that either supports that they should stay open these trampoline parks, or they should be closed. So a great way to have fun. I'm going to put a plus sign above that. That supports that they should stay open. Even the word exercise supports that they should stay open. Now, there's something, though, that I read in that sentence. They can be dangerous, too. That's going to get a negative sign. That does not support trampoline parks staying open. Let's continue. A healthy, happy habit. If we look at this heading, what we know as readers is that headings give us information about what this section of the text might be mostly about. And I see the words healthy and happy. So I'm thinking this part of the text will most likely support trampolines. Paragraph 9. Some people consider jumping on a trampoline the best exercise in the world. It takes very little skill to work out on a trampoline. Simply start bouncing. As you jump, every one of your muscles flex and relax. This constant squeeze and release help to tone your muscles. Huh, maybe I should do that. So we need to go back now as writers and underline some of this key information that was just provided to us. So something that I read is that you don't have to have a whole lot of skill to work out on a trampoline. That would support keeping them open. I also learned more about this idea that it can help to tone your muscles, right? That was a good reason to stay open. I could even underline here that every one of your muscles flex and relax in the constant squeeze and release. That's how you're toning your muscles. So this explains muscle tone. I know, you're writing the same thing I am. Now I'll remember later when I look at my matrix. Jumping improves posture and balance. Look at that. You can even improve your posture and your balance. That's a plus. Studies show that bouncing on a trampoline can help coordination. All right, coordination. So you might be thinking, I know what coordination is. If you do not, that means how you are able to Basically, it has to do with balance. Um, I know that I am sometimes not so coordinated if I try to do two things at once, like walking and talking. I might walk right into a wall. And that's an example of not being very coordinated. So perhaps I need to get on a trampoline. 
Jumping on a trampoline takes a lot of energy and a lot of breath. People that spend a lot of time jumping have healthier lungs and can take in more oxygen. I'm going to underline that part. Healthier lungs, that's a plus. So we learned that it can improve balance, posture, coordination, and I'm going to write down here lungs. Last paragraph here. Most importantly, jumping is fun. I've seen that word before. Trampoline jumpers feel better about themselves, have more confidence. Ooh, that's important. And can't help but be in a good mood while they jump. All positives. So we learned here that, again, they are fun and they help put you in a better mood. Now let's continue. You're probably already thinking ahead of me. If this section was all about the positives, I wonder what this section will be. Almost looks like a compare and contrast. What goes up must come down. Well, I don't know about you. I have experienced trampolines and I think that sometimes maybe when you come down, maybe that causes an injury. I don't know. I'm not sure yet, so I'm not going to write anything. But I'm going to go right over here to paragraph 12 and start reading. Bouncing on a trampoline may be easy, but it isn't always safe. Oh, there we go. Negative. Many times injuries happen. We've seen that keyword pop up. When more than one person is on a trampoline. At trampoline parks, smaller children often jump near bigger kids or adults. This can be dangerous. Okay, a couple things here to underline. I've got a small child, so I know that when they're around bigger kids, like at a park, doesn't have to be a trampoline park, or even sometimes adults who just can't resist, sometimes accidents happen, right? Can be dangerous, negative. The smaller children can be hurt when someone bigger falls. So I'm going to put here, small kids hurt, right? Let's continue. Many other injuries occur when the bouncer doesn't land the right way. Mm. Raise your hand if that's ever happened to you, right? Every hand goes up. Not landing the right way. I know I've done this before. Landing on the edge of the trampoline or on a spring can cause injury. Why they are specific here, huh? Or on a spring. Negative, negative. Falling off the trampoline or landing too hard on one part of your body can cause an injury too. Now, look, we're falling right off the side, even landing too hard on one of our body parts. So this section was about not landing very good. And I know that many of you have probably been on a trampoline. So if you just write that note, you'll remember what that means. Last paragraph, paragraph 14. Common trampoline injuries include sprains. Oh, I guess they're going to list for us all the common ones as negative. Sprains, those can happen to your ankles or wrists. Broken bones, bumps, bruises, and dislocated joints that can happen in your shoulders or your elbows. So these were some common injuries. Now, you might be thinking, Mrs. Body, you missed two things. If you noticed, you're right. Let's go back. We have disregarded a nonfiction text feature. It says here, tough training. Navy SEALs and astronauts used to train for missions using trampolines. Wow, so it's used by the Navy and astronauts. 
That would be a positive. Now let's look at this fun fact. So I'll zoom in because this one's kind of hard to read. There are no mandatory trampoline park regulations. Mm. Regulations meaning rules. 22 trampoline-related deaths occurred between the years 2000 and 2009. Oh boy. Deaths have even occurred. In the last one, Trampoline injuries caused 1 million, wow, look at that, visits to the ER. 93% were children 16 years old or younger. So you've got here a number of injuries. Okay. Now, we need to go through and add some of this information to our matrix. In part two of this video, we're going to go through and add these sections to source two. So we're going to pause and I want you to locate your matrix.